Hey, Cryptosans, it's 10 p.m. Pacific time. My name is Nicodemus, and welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter, where we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space. And keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. It's 10 p.m. Pacific time, December 4th, Sunday night. So now that we're a ways into it, let's take a look at some of the damage done by Sam Bankman Freed. What are some of the stories of destruction in his wake? Let's step back a little bit and take a look. The collapse of FTX will be remembered as one of the darkest moments in crypto history. The company had a major liquidity issue in November and couldn't fulfill its customers' withdrawal requests. Binance wanted to buy FTX, but after taking a look at the books, decided against it. And then FTX couldn't find another solution, and so they filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. And then their CEO, SBF, resigned. This sent shockwaves through the whole community. This caused prices to plummet, including Bitcoin, and that went below 16000 There are still fears of contagion on the market. So let's take a minute tonight and take a look at some of the companies that were affected by FTX's collapse. Liquid Global is a Japanese crypto firm that is owned by FTX, and they stopped withdrawals after FTX filed for bankruptcy. Liquid Global was hacked last year, and they lost over $90 million worth of digital currency. Now, back then, FTX got $120 million in debt financing so that Liquid Global could keep operating. Genesis Global, we talk about them a number of times. They're a crypto platform. They also paused withdrawals. The company said that a lot of customers started taking their assets out because they were worried that their investment would be at risk if it stayed with a centralized organization. Multicoin Capital, they're a venture firm, they also had issues. The managing partners said they stored too many assets on FTX, putting too much trust in that relationship. The company thought it might be able to get some of its money back, but they realized that this is going to be tough since most of it's going to be tied up in bankruptcy proceedings. BlockFi, also they're a lending platform, they've been struggling all year, and they had to give up after the latest events. FTX had previously given BlockFi a $400 million loan and b- offered to buy the company for $240 million. Now, after the bankruptcy, BlockFi couldn't get back to normal, and so they ended up filing for bankruptcy as well. Now, the Singaporean state holding company owned by the local government, Temasek, invested $210 million in FTX International and $65 million in FTX US. The company said that the investment is worth almost nothing because of the collapse. However, Singapore's Deputy Prime Minister, Lawrence Wong, he said that the crisis had very little impact on the local economy, mostly because the large financial institutions had not started investing in cryptocurrency yet. Now, the hedge fund, Galois Capital, said half of its money was stuck in FTX. It's estimated that this could be around $100 million. Paradigm, they're a crypto and Web3 venture capital firm. And they were also shocked by the crash. Some reports said that they'd invested over $270 million in FTX. Now, Paradigm said that the money that they invested in FTX was a small part of their assets. And their co-founder said that he feels deep regret for being involved with the founder and a trading venue that, quote, did not align with crypto's values and who have done enormous damage to the ecosystem. CoinShares is Europe's largest digital asset investment and trading group. And they said that they had over $300 million, or around 11% of their total net assets, stuck on FTX. Now, Galaxy Digital had more than $76 million worth of exposure to this exchange. BlackRock is the world's largest asset manager, and they were also affected. Their CEO, Larry Fink, said that the company had invested $27 million in FTX before the crash. Now, he wouldn't comment on what caused the disaster, saying people should wait for more facts before doing any more speculation. Quote, I'm sure they did the due diligence. Could they have been misled? Could they have done other things? Could we have been misled? Sure. But until we have more facts, I'm not going to speculate. Tiger Global Management is the hedge fund run by billionaire Chase Coleman, and they invested in FTX's fundraisers multiple times. No idea how much money that fund lost, but it seems like it's going to be a lot. And the crypto platform, Aorus Global, had a, quote, short-term liquidity issue earlier this week. 
its institutional credit underwriter M11 Credit said that the two companies were working together to minimize the risks for customers. And to be sure, those are just some of the innocent victims of the damage being done by FTX. Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong slammed SBF's story about how FTX ended up in a $8 billion hole. Armstrong said that there is no way billions of dollars could have just flown past FTX's co-founder, who, by the way, graduated from MIT with a degree in physics. Quote, I don't care how messy your accounting is. You're definitely going to notice if you find an extra $8 billion to spend. He said, even the most gullible person should not believe Sam's claim that this was an accounting error. And so the CEO went on to explain how he thought the mismatch on FTX's balance sheet happened. Quote, it's stolen customer money used in his hedge fund, plain and simple. After FTX collapsed, it was alleged that a $10 billion in customer funds were secretly transferred to Alameda Research. Now, this is according to Reuters. However, SBF said that he didn't knowingly mix funds between FTX and Alameda. He blamed the $8 billion hole on poor accounting in a recent interview with Bloomberg. Bankman Fried explained that the funds from FTX users depositing money into their accounts were sent to Alameda because some banks were more willing to work with a hedge fund than a crypto exchange. This led to some assets being double counted as users' accounts were credited. In the meantime, FTX has been called a company with weak corporate controls by John J. Ray III. Now, he's the one who's overseeing the exchange's bankruptcy because he's now the new CEO. and He's known for handling the Enron collapse. He called the FTX situation unprecedented. In addition to that, court documents show the exchange didn't even have an accounting department. Coinbase is using the collapse of FTX to position itself as a trustworthy name in crypto, as SBF's empire falling raises questions about the entire industry and its future. Now, for his part, Elon Musk has claimed that Sam donated, quote, over a billion dollars to the Democratic Party to support them in their elections. In a recent discussion on Twitter, Will Mendes, the CEO of Science, said that SBF's donations to politicians were, quote, one of the highest ROI trades of all time. He said that because it allowed him to avoid going to jail for stealing over $10 billion. Now, Elon Musk also chimed in. He alleged that SBF's, quote, actual support of Democratic elections was probably in excess of over a billion dollars. And he asked where that money went. Now, Sam is known to have donated $5.2 million to Joe Biden's 2020 presidential campaign and $10 million to support Carrick Flynn, who was a Democratic candidate for a congressional seat in Oregon, who subsequently lost his election. It's also interesting to note that back in May, SBF said that he could donate $100 million to $1 billion for the 2024 U.S. presidential campaign. He called the $1 billion a soft ceiling. He said, quote, As for how much more than that, I don't know. It really does depend on what happens. It's really dependent on exactly who's running for what. Yeah, I think it's a decent thing to look at as a sort of, I would hate to say hard ceiling, but at least as sort of a soft ceiling, I would say. Before FTX filed for bankruptcy, SBF claimed that he had also donated to Republicans, but those donations have not been publicly disclosed. Now, for his part, SBF told the Wall Street Journal that he can only speculate about what happened to billions of dollars of funds after FTX customers wired them to Alameda Research. He said that it could be that Alameda sent the dollars from the FTX account to the user, but that it was just a ledger transfer. He added that outside of that, the funds were wired to Alameda, but he can only speculate about what happened after that. FTX is facing scrutiny over the handling of client funds and its financial relationship with entities such as Alameda. Just two days after FTX and its affiliated entities filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, Reuters reported that at least $1 billion in customer funds had vanished from the crypto exchange, with FTX transferring billions in customer funds to Alameda. When asked by a Wall Street Journal reporter about these accounting issues, Sam explained that back in 2019 to 2020, the exchange used cryptocurrency wallets instead of bank accounts to support the onboarding of fiat currency. 
He said that some customers would wire money to Alameda and then ask to be credited on their FTX account. He estimates that more than half of Alameda's total position came through these wired customer funds to its bank accounts, which would be more than $5 billion. When asked to clarify that he did not know what happened to that $5 billion, Sam said that he could only guess where it was ultimately spent, but added that the dollars are fungible with each other, so it's not like they're going to be able to trace one down from start to finish. Then the reporter asked SBF how he could own more than 90% of Alameda and not know what was happening there. Sam replied that he was busy with FTX and didn't want to get too closely involved with Alameda due to concerns about conflicts of interest. In the meantime, Sam seems to be headed to the hill, virtually or otherwise. He said that he feels obligated to talk to lawmakers about the collapse of his exchange, but he might not do it on the committee's timeline. He said that he feels he needs more time to learn about what caused his exchange to implode and file for bankruptcy before he can appear at a congressional hearing. The House Financial Services Committee invited him to testify at a hearing on December 13th. He said on Twitter that once he finishes learning and reviewing what happened, he would feel it is his duty to appear before the committee and explain, but he is not sure that he will be able to do it by the 13th. Lawmakers have praised Sam's explanation for the crash of his crypto exchange. Committee Chair Maxine Waters said that she would welcome his participation in the hearing. She wrote in a tweet that they appreciate SBF's candor in discussing the crash. She said that his willingness to talk to the public will help the company's customers, investors, and others, and that they would welcome his participation in the hearing on the 13th. Representative Patrick McHenry also pressed him to appear at the hearing. The hearing is part of a series on the FTX catastrophe. Ledger X is reportedly up for sale, and Blockchain.com and Gemini are among the interested buyers. The crypto derivatives exchange in the clearinghouse is regulated by the U.S. CFTC and has been a subsidiary of FTX U.S. since October 2021. According to Bloomberg, Ledger X is one of the few remaining solvent companies in the FTX group. At least 10 companies have expressed interest in purchasing Ledger X. This includes exchanges Blockchain.com, Gemini, Bitpanda, and Kaoshi. Kaoshi is a CFTC-regulated platform. There may be also around six others interested in buying the company, according to a person familiar with the matter. According to Bloomberg, LedgerX is planning to make $175 million available for FTX's bankruptcy proceedings. This would come from a $250 million fund that was originally intended for a CFTC application to get regulatory approval for clearing crypto derivatives trades without intermediaries. LedgerX had previously requested CFTC approval to offer products that were not fully collateralized, but withdrew the application on the same day that FTX filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. In a tweet, LedgerX CEO Zach Dexter reassured customers that the company is solvent and well capitalized, his words, and clarified that Ledger X LLC did not file for bankruptcy. The company has also stopped using the name FTX US Derivatives following FTX US's rebranding of the company after its acquisition. And finally, Nigerian customers of the crypto exchange AAX reportedly attacked the company's office in Lagos and harassed its employees. Now, the reason for the attack is thought to be related to the recent halt of withdrawals. It's unclear when the attack happened, but the Nigerian Blockchain Technology Association stakeholders, or Saiban, confirmed the incident in an announcement on November 28th. Saiban urged angry users to be patient with the exchange's workers who were also affected by the issues. The problems at AAX started on November 14th when the exchange halted withdrawals because of a glitch in the system upgrade. AAX said that the halt in withdrawals was not connected to FTX's ongoing collapse. In fact, they denied having any financial ties with FTX. After the announcement, the AAX team said on November 15th that they were working on raising additional capital as investors withdrew their funds due to concerns about FTX's bankruptcy. The Nigerian Association also said that some of its members were among the affected clients. On November 28th, Ben Kasselin, the vice president for the global marketing and communications of AAX, resigned from his position. 
This led to speculation that operations at the exchange might not resume. Caselin said that despite his efforts to support the community, quote, none of the initiatives we came up with were accepted and any role I had for communication became hollow. He also expressed disagreement with the way that AAX was handling the situation. He described the exchange actions as without empathy and overly opaque. And that's going to do it for us tonight. I want to thank you, my listeners, because when you stop listening, I will stop talking. We'll see you tomorrow night.